What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So for a little while now, some of these big companies have been pushing the idea of cloud gaming forward like Microsoft, Google, and Amazon. And we were kind of speculating as to when they would take a shot at potentially a handheld that'd be dedicated to cloud gaming. Well, it looks like we got that big announcement, but it's not from any of the companies you would expect. We'll go over that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about Nintendo responding to questions around the idea of the Switch going up in price. And we're also gonna be talking about the down year in games for 2022. It's been mentioned many, time on, many times on the podcast, but with more and more numbers coming in, Looks like that might be the case. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with new games heading into Xbox Game Pass to start off the month of August. We can head over here to news.xbox.com. We have a nice little card at the top here showing off the different games. And we'll start with Ghost Recon Wildlands. That's cloud, console, and PC. Is it available? It is available right now. Moving to August 4th, so tomorrow, Shenzhen IO, that's PC. And then we have Turbo Golf Racing. This is cloud, PC, and Xbox Series X and S. It looks kind of like a Rocket League game. Interesting. And then going into Game Pass, day one starting August 9th is Two Point Campus. That's cloud, console, and PC. Moving to August 11th, we have Cooking Simulator, Cloud Console, and PC. Then we have Expeditions Rome on PC. And then Offworld Trading Company on PC. I guess the two big games here would be Ghost Recon Wildlands, although that's technically uh, an older Ghost Recon game, but people like that one more than the, the follow-up there that Ubisoft put out. Still, though, Ubisoft moved has moved on from this one, but hey, if you haven't played it yet... Might be worth checking out just to see what you think of uh, kind of where Ghost Recon is now. And then I guess Two Point Campus, since that's a day one game release into Game Pass. Nothing that really explodes off the page here, but hey, it's just more games being added into the service. Also, I can't believe it, but apparently we're getting pretty close to a re-reveal for Dead Island 2, which is a game that I just didn't think would ever come out. It's kind of the Duke Nukem uh, of current times, Duke Nukem Forever, right? But let's take a look here. This is over on Try Hard Guides. Tom Henderson posts an article saying Dead Island 2 re reveal plan for Q4 2022. So we could be a couple months off here. In fact, it's pointed out that the Game Awards kind of makes a lot of sense. Uh, so that would be interesting to see it come full circle and get a re reveal there. And in fact, some that are being reported here who have played it through like play testing sessions and all this are pretty excited for it. And there is a serious focus on the idea of cooperative play throughout Dead Island 2. It's, it's just interesting stuff. This was first revealed in 2014 and then kind of bounced around the industry and Embracer Group is currently seeing the development along with Deep Silver and everything. Interesting stuff here, but uh, apparently we're looking towards its release in the first half of 2023, nine years after it was first revealed. Here's hoping it's it's able to live up to the legacy that it's built. Now, the legend of Dead Island 2, we'll see. Oh, and we did have EA release their own financial report for this past quarter. There wasn't anything too crazy to go over. It was mostly flat within a couple percent of like margin of error and all of this, but they did talk about their current release schedule, which we can see here. It does appear that Need for Speed is still set for this holiday. I... I'm trying to figure out when they're going to reveal that officially. Honestly, it could be sometime later this month, or maybe they try to work it into a, a Sony event or something that we're expecting to happen in September. But then you can see in Q4, they have Dead Space, PGA Tour, Super Mega Baseball, a major intellectual property, one that's unannounced according to EA. Some are saying, could that be Jedi Survivor? But I mean... They have announced it, they just haven't necessarily like put it in a certain window or anything yet. And then a partner title that is also unannounced. I'm just really curious about Need for Speed and I was happy to see that it's still slated to be coming out in the next like three or four months because it was kind of feeling like uh, we haven't had a reveal yet. It's August, so maybe that got moved into next year, but no, I'm just expecting a reveal any time now for it. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with a, a new game system that's been announced. This is a very preliminary announcement though, mostly the partnership and the idea for a cloud gaming handheld. I think most of us were thinking, okay, maybe Microsoft would do it because obviously they're trying to push cloud gaming heavily right now with partnerships, even with Samsung's so that you don't 
need an Xbox, you can just sync up your controller to your TV. But let's take a look. This is over on Logitech. Yeah, that's right. Logitech and Tencent would be partnering for this device. We can see it says Logitech G and Tencent Games announced partnership to advance handheld cloud gaming. They go on to say uh, they've announced a partnership to bring a cloud gaming handheld to market later this year that will combine Logitech G's expertise in hardware with Tencent Games' expertise in software services. The new device will support multiple cloud gaming services, and both companies are working with the Xbox Cloud Gaming and NVIDIA GeForce Now teams so gamers can play AAA games when they are away from their console or PC. So there's... There are a lot of questions around this. One, I mean, if it's coming out later this year, I mean, it's it's coming out in the next two or three months, then I assume. I'm not really sure why they are even bothering to make this announcement without the device itself to be shown off. But they're also partnering with Microsoft and they said NVIDIA. So I, I guess Microsoft would look at this as saying, hey, we don't have to create a device if Logitech and Tencent are willing to do so. And we'll just kind of piggyback off of it with, hey, you know, here's the here's Xbox Cloud Gaming. Let's make sure that that is very like compatible and it has the right button layout and all of this. That's kind of the thing I'm questioning here, though, is when you have a third party company work on something like this, they do kind of go with the more generic sense of uh, the buttons, the the device itself, the look, because they're not necessarily trying to play into any one service. But on the other hand, that also opens it up to just more overall freedom for which platform you would like to then use with cloud gaming. And I saw the idea this almost confused some people like, wait, we're just going to have a system you buy and its primary job is to just connect to servers and just play the game that way, like remotely. It's not going to play anything locally. Yeah, that, that's that's basically, which I assume means it's going to be fairly cheap. I, that's the biggest sticking point. If it comes out and it's like $250 for some weird reason, I think most people will pass on that and rightfully so. I think this is a system that you would expect to be 100 to $150 and I guess it'll also come down to the screen quality and if they want it to feel more like a premium device, maybe it finds its way up to the $200 mark, which uh, even that might be kind of difficult to sell, considering you can use your phone to play a lot of these cloud games, right? Like you don't need a device like this, but I will at least say, I. The idea of using your phone and tying it up to play some of these games, especially if it's a game that's going to take up more time all at once, like uh, maybe you want to jump in and play Halo Infinite for whatever reason through the cloud on your phone. You can do that, but your phone's going to be in use for a solid 10 or 15 minutes as you're playing through a match. And you can, of course, get a lot of interruptions through text messages and other things. And that's mostly been the big sticking point for me is I don't necessarily want to give up my phone for extended play sessions. What if you want to play a game for an hour? Your phone's basically going to be tied up that entire time. And yeah, you can sync up a controller and use a clip and everything, but I don't know. It still feels kind of weird to just give up your phone for that long when you may end up needing it or... Uh, people need to get a hold of you and kind of mess up your gaming session anyway. But I'm at least curious as to the pricing for this because that could kind of set the market when it comes to these cloud gaming devices, which I think we're going to see more of them and just the overall look of it and features and everything. I mean, Microsoft themselves have reported a pretty big jump in overall user engagement when it comes to cloud gaming. And a lot of that has to do with the free-to-play Fortnite game being added in. You can just kind of fire up a browser and start playing. But I guess the idea of this little hand handheld could at least be interesting so i'll keep my eye on it next up let's talk about nintendo responding to questions around the idea of the switch going up in price that might sound kind of weird but i mean we all saw meta raise the price around the quest 2 vr headset by a hundred dollars per SKU, which was just out, like outright shocking to people. I don't know if we've ever seen that for a console. Usually they get cheaper or you get a mid-gen refresh that does bump up the price, but you get generally more features, maybe more power in the case of the PS4 Pro and the Xbox Series X. But right now with inflation and all this, a lot of consumer electronics are actually moving up in price. Think of like cameras, TVs, etc. In fact, Bloomberg had an entire article and rundown of this happening in Japan, and that kind of led to questions for uh, Nintendo and Microsoft as well as Sony. But we saw Sony was kind of like, 
Well, they, nothing to really say right now. They didn't exactly want to give a hard answer on this, but we can see over with Bloomberg, they actually talked to many different analysts who say consumers in Japan are getting used to price hikes. This is Morningstar analyst uh, saying, I don't see them getting upset if game consoles followed suit. Now this is again, specifically in Japan that they're reflecting on for the market. And Bloomberg did reach out, like I said, to Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. Microsoft declined to comment. Uh, Sony, again, we mentioned was uh, kind of skittish about answering it directly, but Nintendo just outright said, hey, we have no plans to raise Switch prices, which to me isn't very surprising considering they already raised prices with the OLED model, right? Like. Yes, I, I understand they put an OLED in there, they added more memory for the storage, and they have a dock that has an ethernet port, which is a first for Nintendo in like the entirety of their console history was putting a, a network port on there, I know, right? But looking at it th that way, it was smart for Nintendo to do that and kind of get ahead of things so they can sell a more expensive model without having to do things like alter the internals with the chip or anything like that. And OLED sounds premium, right? Even though I bet that panel didn't cost them too much more over that LCD panel, it is a world of difference. And they were even able to increase the screen size, which when you get down to those kind of numbers that you can convey easier on like a spec sheet and then put right there on the box, yeah, people don't really mind that $50 increase. Whereas if you just said, hey, now it's $400 with no added benefit, like what we've seen with the, <laughs> the Meta VR headsets, yeah, people will raise eyebrows then. Although I will say with everything else in terms of like uh, luxury items, consumer electronics going up in price. It is interesting that there is an expectation when it comes to the gaming market that consoles won't go up in price. And that's kind of what seems like anyway, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo are kind of dealing with. And yeah, we'll get to the point where Sony will like rework the internals of the PS5 to keep it cheaper, which might mean they have to shrink down the heat sink or do other things. And Microsoft probably just eat the cost. Nintendo, they technically raised their price with that $50 bump with added benefits. So I, I'm not sure if they have plans to raise the Switch Lite in a similar fashion with a Switch Lite OLED, but it wouldn't shock me if they went that route at some point. But as of now, Nintendo says no, no, uh, no price increase for the Switch on the market. Next up, let's talk about some of the numbers that have come out from early reports with the MPD sales. These are numbers that are reflective of the retail market in the US, but some digital sales are thrown in there as well if they are shared by the companies. For example, Nintendo won't share them. I think PC data for Activision and Blizzard aren't necessarily shared, but we'll get digital numbers for certain 2K, Sony, and all of this. Well, we can see this posted up over on The Verge, says US consumer spending on video game products has fallen by $1.78 billion in quarter two, according to market research firm NPD. Overall spending in video game in the US totaled 12.35 billion in the recent quarter, down 13% year over year. The findings follow both Microsoft and Sony reporting revenue declines in gaming as the pandemic growth slows. And you know, I had to think about it a little bit in terms of like big splashy releases for games. We haven't had many like over the, like over the start of the summer. And then even before that, where this, uh, this quarter would be reflecting like nothing massive, right? And that, I feel like that's been the biggest problem with this year. Sure. There are games that that have come out that you may really like, but it's probably not a 10 million unit seller or something, something that the market would really benefit from when it comes to comparing to last year when people were just at home and there were many releases actually coming out, again, compared to what Sony's done. And we talked about this with Sony's financial report this quarter versus last year when they had things like Ratchet and Clank and Returnal and this year where they didn't really have anything. It's yeah, it's not surprising that Elden Ring is basically always number one for the MPD sales so far this year. But this week we will find out more information from Nintendo and if Sony and Microsoft are anything to go by right now, I expect them to report numbers that are also down. So we have Microsoft down from last year, Sony down from last year, the entire US gaming entertainment market down from last year. If Nintendo reports they're down from last year. Hey, I guess it really is a down year. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about an interesting leak that just 
randomly popped up online out of nowhere. You can see this posted up over on Xputer says, Stalker Shadow of Cherno Chernobyl early console build leaked online. I saw it says like, what? This game is only on PC. It was from like 2007. We know that there is a new Stalker, Stalker 2, that's coming out at some point. I mean, we've seen listings for like special editions start to go up. So we're kind of thinking that maybe the Stalker 2 comes out early next year. However, this is a game, or at least the port for consoles, that's being worked on by another company that... I guess has been contracted out by GSC Game World. Now, Stalker back in the day was an interesting game for PC. It did things that other first person shooters didn't do and leaned more into the idea of survival overall. Um, but this would still be done on the X-Ray engine. And like I said, would be the first time we've seen it on anything other than PC. And in fact, there was some footage that went up on YouTube, again, out of nowhere for the console version. So I, I guess it's already just leaked out there. Uh, this was posted up with an entire 15 minute segment from Duty Warrior, just kind of playing through it. So I guess this is something that will just be announced at any point, maybe on Twitter, maybe it's part of a show. Again, we expect there to be some sort of Sony event in September, or maybe it's just revealed in a press release. Oh yeah, and it's coming out uh, later on this year over the holidays to get everyone caught up and built up for Stalker 2 some point next year. But yeah, I guess we'll keep an eye out for Stalker making its way to consoles for the first time. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I ask, would you be interested in a handheld system that is only used for cloud gaming? 80% said, no, I'm not interested in cloud gaming at all, which, yeah, I, I get it. I think for most people who are really plugged in to this hobby and this space are more inclined to play, like, games locally on their system, right? Uh, but then 16% said, maybe, depends on the price. Like, if this comes out and it is just dirt cheap, it's $100, maybe. I could see some people say, hey, you know what, That'd be, that wouldn't be a bad idea to pick that up. And then 3% just say, yes. You know, I again, I, when I used like the Vita back in the day on the PS4 for remote play a couple of times, it was an interesting experience. I think the PSP on the PS3 for its time, right? That remote play was pretty impressive then. I mean, it didn't work great, but it was still an interesting experience. It's kind of a shame, by the way, that the Vita doesn't work on the PS5 through remote play because that's the biggest issue I have with using your phone through touch controls. It's not great. And using a backbone thing or an attachment at least helps out, but it's still an extra thing you have to attach to your phone. Whereas with the Vita, if you wanted to play on your uh, on your PS4, as long as you had that Wi-Fi connection that, that wasn't terrible, it worked well enough to, to get the point across there. But I, I guess we'll see. Again, pricing, look, functionality, there's a lot of stuff in play here. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Spike saying, I think if the deal goes through, it would be a question of, would you rather pay $70 up front or just play it in Game Pass? At least for the first year or so, I think having COD day one on Game Pass would definitely be felt by Sony, but it wouldn't be the end of them. I mean, that was an, an argument that Sony was making to regulators like, how are we supposed to compete with this? We have $70 price tags on our games because we are doing these massive investments. We have to recoup that cost we don't think we can do it through a subscription service, but Microsoft thinks they can, and they have the money to lose it. If they, like, if they have to lose money for a decade to make Game Pass eventually work, Microsoft has the treasury to do that. Sony might not, right? So that's kind of where the clashing of ideas is here. And yeah, Microsoft's willing to throw Call of Duty into Game Pass day one and then also sell it for $70 on the PS5 because hey, Activision was doing that before we got here. Just keep in mind, you can just go ahead and download it on Game Pass. You don't have to drop the 70. Yeah, that would probably hurt Sony quite a bit when it comes down to it with the marketing and, and all the, yeah. So I, I think that's also a way for Microsoft to get around the whole regulator. Like, hey, you gotta 
keep it multi-platform, Microsoft's like, sure, it'll just be much more accessible on our system. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here. Today was a cloud gaming handheld. Are you interested in it? And do you think that's kind of the way the market may go here for a little while with a bunch of these systems popping up? And then also, what about Nintendo saying no to a Switch uh, price increase, but do you think they'll work around this a bit with maybe some new models being introduced for higher price points? And then is this a down year? Because we see all these numbers coming in saying it is, but I also see people who are pretty excited about certain releases. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.